So today's going to be a bit of up and down and up and down. We put a lot of this wood, me and Debs, on the truck. I've run out of like the thinner stuff, so we've had to use like thick kind of sleepers, which too high is quite a lot of wood. I still don't know if I've got enough on there, but my dilemma is the stack here I can't get to. There is quite a lot of wood, thin and thick, in there. But we've got the big table on the top, which we are going to get around to soon, but that's a whole other drama, and it's going to take about eight people to move the thing. So, yeah, we're going to chop it into the size it's got to be, and then um, we're going to sand it down, and hopefully that makes it light enough to be able to actually move. We are going to take all this wood down and put it near the garden, ready for a garden bed. And there is some... Uh, like posts in here that we're going to use in the compost area eventually so we're just trying to clear up the top a little bit and uh yeah got to get some firewood anyway from down the bottom these guys are going to give me a hand with the firewood they don't know it yet they think they're just getting a ride <laughs> so we're going to go down the bottom we'll see you guys there so we made it down the bottom the wood didn't fall off we've got well, i had one strap on it but it's quite um back heavy so it kind of wants to go like this but it didn't so that's good so Deb's going to come down and help me shortly and basically we're going to put it down here by the greenhouse until I'm ready to start building those garden beds and this uh, compost area over here. It's a bit of deja vu really because I only just cleared this, all the wood out of here um, to build the garden bed over there and like now it's nice and cleared apart from a bit of mowing that I have to do but now I'm going to fill it up again so yeah, it's pretty much just a storage area, but I don't want it to be a storage area, but it is what it is. So that's that job done. Now we're gonna go up and get some firewood and these kids are gonna give us a hand. So we're up here by the wood pile. Okay. Most of the kids are up here. We're gonna get all this wood, hopefully on my ute. And then so it's a nice clear area. So when we come to do those rings up there, um, we can make another pile here. Because I really want to try to get rid of that because all um, Adina's area down here with the barna grass, we're trying to make a bit of a wind barrier with the barna grass. So it'd be nice to be able to do that um, properly without having all this wood here. But it is what it is and we've got to get wood for winter. So got to get ready. So hopefully these kids actually help. So that's probably as full as we're going to get it without getting stuck. We haven't got uh, much more left. It's probably maybe half a trailer load left over there. Yeah, but yeah I'm really hoping next weekend we can make that a huge pile again. Get some more loads up. Did you help big time? <laughs> so we made it up and this is the pile here off the truck. I have to get to the woodshed eventually, but we need to start stacking some of the wood so we can store it a bit better because it's a bit of a cluster in there. So while I've been hauling wood everywhere, Deb's, well over the last few days, he's been building this here. You want to explain what it is? Um, it's going to be a covered hay feeder for the goats. Covered hay feeder? Yeah, plus okay. like to put their minerals and stuff on them. Yeah, so we're going to start feeding the goats a bit more hay and hopefully that um, helps the milk production. Yeah, and yeah. like the salt. Works. 
yeah so it's a bit more money but uh hopefully it pays out in the long run i'll tell them what's happening to the almond supply at the moment so um the idea originally was to feed or not supplement feed the goats so you get money for virtually no money but that doesn't seem to be working out because her milk supply has been dropping uh, quite drastically. Um, so the theory is we're going to put in a little bit of money to s get more milk out of her basically. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. So we were initially getting almost three litres and I know that's like the original flush after the kidding. Um, and then that worked its way down to two litres but we some days we're getting almost nothing so we were going to give up on milking her and been doing some more reading into it and um, at the moment just by giving her a little bit extra we're getting well we're back to up about a liter a day i think which is not nearly enough for us but we'll keep working on it so yeah hopefully all this infrastructure adding and um getting more high in that really pays off hey guys it's the next day well it's actually two days later um it bucketed down with rain yesterday so you guys um dipped out there i could have went down with my gopro but um not much would have got done and i would have got sick so yeah today i'm just mucking around i'm actually um gonna claim one of these peaches here there's quite a lot of peaches on this tree and yesterday it had a bit of a stormy weather and I bet you these pigs got really fat but yeah it's actually quite hard to get in here to actually harvest the peaches I'm probably the only one that's game enough but I'm pretty sure these peach trees are going to be really fertilized really good hey Bruno because these guys like just pretty much wait under here for the um, peach trees up here to fall Wow, really? <laughs> He's wanting a belly rub. Unbelievable. <laughs> and then the other two are on their way. Look, I'm getting jealous now. They want me to um, bring them down some pictures. Really? Father, mother, son? Not quite. That's not the mother over there. Okay, wow, another one coming. Look, they're all coming to the party. I think we're missing just one. They all come because they know I'm getting peaches and they know some are going to definitely fall when I climb this tree. So, yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to get a peach in and now I'm going to get out of here. So I've pretty much just been dropping all the kind of all the rotten ones down because it's there's such an abundance up here. But uh, these are peach cot peaches. They are delicious. They're so good. So yeah, these pigs are probably having at least half of them from the tree. But every now and again I'm trying to come down for a snack. And we're probably actually gonna have to do a big harvest soon. Um, so we can preserve some peaches but yeah every day at the moment I'm coming down and picking them one of the things I do have to do today is chop this Tythonia I've actually started selling Tythonia now um, I just sell it for like six dollars for a cutting about uh, 12 inches long um, so yeah, if you want some, um, hit me up. I sell them for like six bucks for a cutting like that and the same for barna grass. But soon I'm gonna have to like chop and drop all of this uh, material and um, probably won't sell it again till spring. But yeah, if you're keen on some, just hit me up.
these are all the cuttings that I'm selling today. Um, just remember when you do buy with me, I always normally give you a couple of extra, because mainly when I'm chopping the branches up, if I've got extra and I don't need them, I pretty much give them to you. So yeah, you can be assured you're gonna get more than you ask for. Um, and the good thing about me doing all this propagation is this woodier stuff is not much good anyway for the understory for chop and drop. So uh, all my chop and drop material over there is under my apple tree. So they get all of the love and care and I make a little bit of, of a side hustle selling the Tythonia. So it's a win-win. Eventually I'll be selling other stuff like um, sugar cane and probably some bananas, but I'm not quite bananaed out yet. So I'm still going to be doing a lot of propagating for our own property for bananas. So that's definitely um, going to be something for the future. But for now, just selling one thing at a time, trying to make a bit of a side hustle to pay for all these tropical fruit trees that are in our food forest. Now this berry patch is pretty much done for the season, but I've found a little gem under here. See that? Raspberries. So this is how much I found today. Not a whole lot, but that's a good uh, mouthful. Mm. So good. Don't worry, I did leave some for the kids. Didn't pick all of them, but I picked the easier ones. <laughs> they can get the harder ones. But I reckon soon we're going to have quite a good harvest of raspberries. I was riding these off for the season. Same with the boysenberries. They all just went pretty crap. And since I've been feeding them with a little bit of fertilizer, they've actually um, bouncing back really good, apart from the weeds in there, but I'm quite um, happy with the results with those raspberries. So it's not a very long video today. Um, basically, I don't know what I was videoing the other day, so yeah, I might've gone way off topic, but what do you do? I've got to, we've got to do some harvesting tonight, but basically I'm going to finish this video here uh, just so I can get focused and um, we're going to have dinner and then come down. Just going to have some family time without the camera, so sorry about that, but if you haven't seen us harvesting, it would be pretty much the same as our last harvest video, so nothing you missed there. Yeah, until the next episode, I'll catch you guys later. Luke, out.